the Flint Institute of Art has been a center for arts and culture in this city since it was established nearly 90 years ago in 1928. The second largest art museum in Michigan, one of the biggest art museum schools in the country, and it is certainly growing, certainly evolving. And to talk about that, and thank you for the hospitality, we welcome the executive director of the Flint Institute of Arts, John Henry. Thank you so much for being here with us tonight. Thank you for having me. Thanks for being here. Well, thank you for having us. What a beautiful, beautiful space this is. Uh, it is the perfect place. What is your personal mission statement for this museum? Well, we're an educational institution, and it's our intention to bring the finest quality art experiences and art programs in the form of exhibitions, educational programs, special events uh, to the entire community. So all ages, all walks of life, all backgrounds. How do you feel this museum reflects Flint? Well, you know, I think this museum reflects Flint like, like museums across the country reflect the community that they serve. We're sort of a, um, a scrapbook of who lived here and what they collected, what they were interested in. We, uh, we reflect the, the intellect and taste of those who lived here before and contributed their uh, collections to the museum and who continue to collect and give today. And there's some stunningly familiar names, as I learned, that ha have, have been contributors, names like Chrysler. That's right. We have a, a big collection of Bernice Chrysler's um, American Naive Painting. And also the uh, it's some beautiful uh, pieces of Chinese uh, work as well. It, it really is something to, as you walk around the galleries and see what's here. And just even the history of the, the, the land we're on, this whole cultural center. Well, this belonged to C.S. Mott. This was part of his farm. And in the mid-50s, he and the other captains of industry got together and thought that it would be um, a, a wonderful idea to provide a cultural um, complex to complement the educational complex that's also down here with the community uh, college and the uh, high school, which is just behind us, and the junior high, which was just behind us. And so next door to us is, is the state's largest planetarium, and adjoined to that is the uh, Flint Youth Theater. Across the street is the Whiting Auditorium. There's Sloan uh, Museum of, of Natural History and, and, um, and uh, Science. And then across the street on the other side is the Flint Institute of Music and the home of the symphony. Mm. It's so, it, is, it's a, it just makes such a statement when you drive onto this complex. Well, I thought it was, I think it's very visionary. It's one of the reasons uh, I was very excited about coming here to be able to uh, exchange ideas with other disciplines in the arts and have them so close and to be able to collaborate on so many things. Now, I understand the school. Talk about the school associated with this museum, because I guess as long as you're potty trained <laughs> up to whatever, you can come and, and, and learn. What makes you think you have to be potty trained? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> we serve everybody. <laughs> what kinds of things you offer in this? No, well, you know, we did start as a school originally. Okay. Uh, there was, before we were a museum, we were a school. And we intended to set up a place where artists could come and meet other artists and work with instructors and and um, socialize and advance their own work. And within two years, we began collecting. Well-intentioned donors started giving us works of art, and so we had to expand our operation to also care for collections. Mm -hmm. And we bounced around from one place to another as we kept outgrowing a facility until 1958 when we built this place that we're in today. And that's why a significant part of this building is devoted to uh, art education in our studios. So these studios go back to 1958, but again, uh, the vision was, was um, big and the ideas were big and, and we continue to, um, to thrive. We've gone with an unbroken uh, history of offering classes since 1928 and, and um, we're adding to it today. Indeed. We're adding a big glass studio as as we speak. We're in the middle of construction. Let's talk about that. The new contemporary craft wing? Yes. What's going to be there? Well, that's the reason we're building this glass studio because we were just given two collections. Coincidentally, they're, they're related, but it's coincidental that we got them both about the same time. One is uh, one of the most outstanding collections of 
contemporary ceramics in private in, in private hands um, it's been half of it's been donated excuse me donated to us and the other half's been pledged and so we needed a place for it there are over 400 works and uh, even storage was going to be a problem for us the other collection is a collection of contemporary glass and it too is one of the best in the country and it's re been purchased recently by a local collector who has um, not only donated it, but helped us build the new wing to house it. And a maker space is on its way. Well, that's the glass studio. That's yes, glass you're going to be able to come in mm. and watch glass blowers making making uh, new objects. That, that's addictive. I, I, I'm in for that. And you've got a big, big upcoming celebration of Auguste Rodin coming up. We do. You know, um, I think most of your listeners have heard the name Rodin. Uh, one of the most important sculptors of the 19th and early 20th century. Mm -hmm. One of the most important sculptors in the history of art. And at his peak, he was considered the greatest sculptor in the world after Michelangelo. So he had a traditional training, uh, but he, his, he was working at a time when art was going through a tremendous change. He was working at the same time that the Impressionists and Post-Impressionists were making their paintings, so uh, he his his work was expressionistic, broke a lot of the rules, and he remains a tremendous influence even today. And the uh, ex exhibit opens on May sixth, and part of the whole worldwide celebration of Rodin. That's right. Finally, what do, uh, this is the not, next year will be the ninetieth anniversary. What's your vision for the Flint Institute of Arts into its next century? Well, again, I think we, we want to stay the course of being a, an important educational institution, bringing things to this community that they wouldn't be able to find uh, without us, um, bringing things from far away that um, not everyone can travel to see. So our exhibitions are important, our educational programs are important, our collaborations with our colleagues across the street and, and, and uh, around town, the universities, um, the hospitals, we're involved with them as well. Um, we, we want to remain a, a vital part of the community. And it is. It's a cultural gem. And again, thank you for the hospitality and for having us well, here. You're very welcome. Thanks Don Henry, me. Executive Director of the Flint Institute of Arts. Thank you so much. Thank we have much more to come.